Hey friends, I'm Junie D, and welcome to another episode of Steal This Side Quest, the series where I outline a simple, scalable D&D adventure that can be dropped into your game when you need a quick side quest. Each adventure is tied to one of my original characters, and this time it is Augury the Smuggler Boss. You may remember Augury from a previous video where she interviews your character to see if they are amoral enough to be useful for her organization. My goal is not to change those beliefs in you, but simply to identify the cost of overriding them. You don't need to have seen the other video to run this adventure, but it might help you get a feel for Augury as a character. I will put a link to a Google Doc in the description with a basic write-up of the adventure, as well as links to relevant stat blocks. These adventures aren't play-tested or anything, and I'm leaving them very flexible so that you have the freedom to suit them to your own party composition and level. So just know, you will probably need to make tweaks for your own table. This one, as written, is probably best suited for a pretty low level party, like two to three. Now, let's see what Augury needs. Perhaps your party has done some work for Augury before, but if not, they will know her by reputation. She basically runs the city's black market, heading up a vast network of smugglers, which she manages without mercy. She's not a good guy, but she runs a business, so she will keep to her word unless given a good reason not to. Today, she has a job offer. A delivery's gone astray. The wagon was ambushed by bandits. One of my men survived, but was unable to recover the item. I need it found and returned to me, and quickly. The goods are... perishable. She'll pay in gold and is willing to give part of the payment as a deposit, but will reserve the bulk of it to be handed over upon delivery of the item. I'm sending tracks along. He should be able to bring you to the area where they were ambushed, so you may begin your hunt. It's a fairly large item, so I'm hopeful that the bandits haven't been able to make it far. Tracks in the Dust is a grizzled, gray-furred tabaxi with a bent tail, an ex-city guardsman who worked as a double agent for Augury until his cover was blown, about eight months ago. Since then, he's been running deliveries instead. Take Marrow as well. She will allow us to communicate while you're away. I can't normally spare her, but time is of the essence, and I can't have you coming all the way back here if something comes up. Marrow is a sort of animal messenger, allowing Augury to cast Sending to speak audibly through the bird. Players can reply when she addresses them, as per the rules of the Sending spell, but it's one way, so they can't send messages to her unless they have some other method. Trax will lead the players a few miles outside of town, following an infrequently used back road that the smugglers tend to favor, since they're less likely to encounter other travelers there. Mero will fly overhead, keeping pace with the party, and occasionally landing on a player's shoulder or weapon to swivel her blank, eyeless skull around. Trax is gruff and not inclined to converse, but will give short answers to direct questions. He and two others were driving a wagon to a city about 15 miles away, but they weren't very far into the trip when they were ambushed. There are a few inconsistencies in his story. For example, he will initially say that he has no idea what was in the big chest strapped into the wagon, but will later let slip that he was worried the bumpy road might have cracked it. He claims that the bandits were able to surprise them by waiting for the wagon to pass and then sneaking up behind it but also mentions that he was at the back of the wagon acting as lookout. Feel free to throw in more contradictions if players end up talking with him much. If he's called out on any of these, he will try to cover up and claim that he was so shaken by the ambush and his memory might not be so good. High insight rolls will allow players to notice that Trax seems to be growing increasingly nervous as you travel, and players with good passive perception might spot his hackles going up as he points to a stand of trees a little ways from the road, where he says the bandits appeared. By this point, players will likely already be suspicious. This might even save them from walking straight into the trap that their tabaxi companion is leading them towards. There are three bandits concealed in the trees, who might be spotted by a particularly good active perception check, but will otherwise surprise players when they get within 20 feet. Two of the bandits are on the ground, and one is up a tree, firing at players with her light crossbow. Trax, who has the stats of a bandit captain, turns on the players and fights alongside the bandits until one is killed. As soon as the first bandit goes down, he books it through the trees to where the bandits' horses were tied up out of sight. One horse has a massive lumpy shape on its back, something about the size of a barrel, wrapped in thick blankets. 
Tracks will mount this horse and attempt to flee. If players are not able to stop him, they can follow his tracks fairly easily once the combat is over. Feel free to throw in a small tracking skill challenge with escalating DCs, or add some environmental obstacles if you want to draw the chase out a little. Either way, once things have settled down, either because Trax is out of sight or because players have captured or killed him, Augury's voice will come through Marrow's bony beak. How are things going? Have you found the ambush point? Did they take only the chest, or did they take the wagon, too? Report status. Of course, players can tell Augury whatever they want, but if they tell her about Trax's betrayal, she will follow up with another sending. That rat. I will double your payment if you bring him back alive. Half again if you deliver his body. And the parcel, of course. Her top priority is still the stolen goods, but she has learned to be absolutely ruthless with any breach of trust to ensure that everyone knows how dangerous it is to cross her. This means that she is strongly motivated to ensure that Trax is punished for his betrayal, preferably by her. Trax himself, if he's still alive, does not want to die, which means he also does not want to be brought back to Augury. He is fully aware of her reputation for offering no second chances. He can be effectively bribed or threatened into doing almost anything. If the players don't unwrap the item to see what it is, Trax will tell them at this point. It's a wyvern egg, still intact, unless the party has somehow damaged the parcel. He's very reluctant to let go of the egg for nothing. He might do anything from trying to backstab the players to suggesting that they run off with him and split the bounty. Augury had a buyer in place for this item already, and despite Trax's assurances, insightful players should understand that fencing something like this may be challenging. Obviously, not every party is going to bring the egg and the tabaxi back to Augury, but if they do, she will make good on her promises. Take the parcel downstairs. I want it by a lit hearth, wrapped in wool, two guards stationed outside at all times. Your payment on the desk. Thank you for handling this. I had my suspicions, I'll admit, about tracks, but it's so difficult to find a double agent you can trust just by nature of the job. I've learned to treat them as disposable. If Trax is alive, he will be bundled off to a jail cell for Augury to deal with later. If asked, she is threatening, but non-specific about her plans for him. There are ways that people can be useful to me, even against their will. Trax placed himself in my service, and I intend for him to continue to serve me. The only difference between you and him is that you chose to be paid in gold, and he chose to be paid in wrath. Remember this if you're ever given the chance again. I reward loyalty quite generously. Of course, there are many other paths that your party could take. If they choose to trust Trax for any reason, he will, of course, backstab at the first opportunity. If they choose to betray Augury, it should be pretty obvious that she holds a grudge. She has agents all over the city, and as a sorcerer, she also has magical means to achieve her ends. Perhaps Mero will make an appearance with another message for them once Augury has realized that she's been betrayed. I made the mistake of thinking you had survival instincts. You made an enemy today, where you might instead have made a very powerful ally. This adventure was written for a party of around level 3, but there are a few things that you can do to scale it up or down to suit your own table. If you want to lower the difficulty, you can make Trax a regular old bandit instead of a bandit captain. And if you want to make the adventure harder, you can add more bandits, or make both the bandits and Trax more powerful by giving them better weapons, or even class abilities. If you really want to turn this into a big encounter for a high level party, you can use an easy bandit encounter to lull your players into a false sense of security and then have the Mama Wyvern come after her egg. To incorporate this adventure into your campaign, you may want to use Augury as a recurring NPC who can give players all kinds of shady quests and assignments, or even use her as a villain. I hope you liked it. I love Augury even though she's a bad guy. Josh was like, people might kill Augury in this adventure though, and I was like, well... She's a bad guy. My characters would probably kill her too. So don't worry about protecting Augury. She was built to be a villain, so I imagine that in a lot of universes, she will die. But she will always live on this channel where she will be my mean lesbian boss bitch. Hey there, don't
don't worry, I haven't summoned any more fiends that I know of. I'm here to announce another partnership with Die Hard Dice, this time for a dice palette themed around me, Wisteria Skitterquick Appledackle, the gnome wizard in training. This palette includes five full sets of polymer dice and a metal dire D20 in an enchanting gold glitter, both inspired by my adorable magical girl vibe. Plus, each palette comes with an art card starring yours truly and this super cute die cut sticker featuring art by Ken and Last from the Die Hard Dice team. They're limited edition, and last time we did this, they sold out faster than a hasted quickling wearing boots of speed. So don't wait to place your order at the link in the description.